Come, Holy Spirit, and fill the hearts of your faithful. Kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, and they shall be created, and you shall create the face of the earth. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning, and welcome again to this online service, the third in our series of stewardship, being on treasure, the last two weeks on time and talents. The real measure of our wealth is how much we would be worth if we lost all our money. This anonymous quote I found while reading and preparing this sermon resonated with me, and I believe this is what the message of stewardship of our treasure means. So let's hear it again. The real measure of our wealth is how much we'd be worth if we lost all our money. Today we meet Jesus in the Gospel passage from Matthew towards the middle of a series of sermons making up the Sermon on the Mount. These begin with the Beatitudes and go through principles of interpreting and living the laws of the Old Testament. These sermons give us ways to act and respond to the love of God and to follow Jesus. It sounds and looks easy to follow Jesus on the surface. Blessed are they, give up everything and follow me. Come to me and I will give you rest. Sure, these may be able to give our lives and treasures to Jesus and give us and live a good Christian life. But this is not easy, as we know that when we come to the part when we have to let go, it is not easy to do. What Jesus is really saying to us, I believe, is that we need to look at our motives of what we give and how we receive and what we do with what we have. It begs the question, why? Why do we want an item? Why are we putting something in an account? Why, why, why? Over many experiences and years of ministry, I have stopped and started new ministries. I have changed outcomes. I have watched many times people lose everything and then try for the rest of their lives to rebuild it. This is the key, I believe, to understanding our gospel message of the sermon. Do we really know and believe in what we need to do will be the best for, our, for the kingdom of God, or am I doing this for myself in my own strength? Slogans, taglines, messages can get us to buy a product, a service. Things like Just Do It from Nike, Finger Licking Good from Kentucky Chicken, A Diamond Is Forever from De Beers. All these things are made for us to purchase something, to get excited about something, and perhaps, in a lot of ways, these lead us into trouble. The brand, the slogan, the color, pull us away from what we really need into what the consumerist nature of the slogan is saying. It's a way of shopping, a way of engaging, and some are so good that we never ask the question why. Does this have a lifespan? Is this for a quick gratification? Does this end up in a cycle of purchase and engagement which may have an expiry date, which will increase in price and perhaps will disappear from our lives? These are the whys we should be asking. What we need to do is always be cognitive of what we need to take stock of, and that is who we are, what are our motives and our purpose, So our choices in turn will lead us to making choices aligned to what we believe. During the last 10 years, I've had many changes in ministry and secular work, as I mentioned. Having been a contractor for two major banks across a global, regional and local sectors and self-supporting priests at the same time, I've met many people and done many things and have at times found it tough to balance the needs of my life the needs of a secular business and a church I have chosen to be priested in. Sometimes I wondered if I am the same person who can balance these areas of life, and then at another time, my world is almost operating out of three different sources, mine, the world, and spiritual understanding of God. And somehow, after all these things, it all comes back to one thing. I, God, have called you. I will not leave you and will be there regardless. 
That's the promise of Jesus, the one who was and is and is to come, and is keeping centered on the cross, which we have as a promise that Jesus died and rose for us, and that we can certainly hold on to. And to the quote I mentioned earlier, the real measure of our wealth is how much we would be worth if we lost all our money. We are required as Christians to look deeply into our own lives and what our treasure is. Where is this kept? What does it look like? How do we use it? Who benefits? How do we use our treasure for God? Treasure is not always and only the money. It's how we have used this money, as we have spoken about, to buy treasures on earth. How we have invested and protected the wealth we have, have accumulated. The idea of storing up treasures for yourself implies both a self-reliance and a self-interest that's at odds with the kingdom of God. So it's a question of where your treasure resides and what it will be used for. Is it in heaven or is it in the material things of this earth? Our gospel again teaches us that Jesus takes this idea of storing up treasure for ourselves and points out that when we treasure something in this way, we actually make it the thing that rules our life. It is for God's purpose. This will be everlasting and will continue. If it's for me, it can become like an addiction. And this could lead to more and more for me and less and less for God and cause tremendous anxiety and fear. And what I've learned is that we will never have enough to satisfy the need for security or fame or power or whatever it is that is our driver. Our anxiety about our human treasures leads us to work and plan to ensure our financial security. But the end result is just more anxiety because the things here are so insecure and inevitably let us down. So as I've mentioned and we are seeing, Jesus' answer is that our focus should change from material things to heavenly things, from wealth and possessions to the kingdom of God. I believe that what God is saying to us is to look at our lives, our treasures, and our belief. So come to God, remember and know the cross, and allow the Holy Spirit to minister to us and guide us into God's love and kingdom. My prayer for this stewardship season is that we will take all we have accumulated in money and other treasure, and I pray in Jesus that we will give as we can and offer and use our treasures to build the kingdom of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. May we as individuals and a community put our treasure in a future with God. And when we do this and have what we have, we will find that we will find more and more of God and less and less of ourselves. Amen.